Welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg. I'm Village President Al Larson. In this episode, I'll be talking with Bob Lyons, Stephanie Sarnoff, and Jane Rozek from the Schaumburg Township District Library. Then Roxanne Benvenuti will be here to tell us about the 2011 September Fest. We'll finish the program with Lisa Sukup and Camille Branchik from the Prairie Center Arts Foundation. All of this and more today on Speaking of Schaumburg. The Schaumburg Township District Library anchors Schaumburg's Town Square. With over one million visitors each year, it's the second largest library in the state of Illinois. Here to talk about the library and what, what it has to, to offer our Library Board President, Bob Lyons, Library Director Stephanie Sarnoff, and the library's local historian, Jane Rosett. Well, welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Bob, what's your role with the library here? Well, this year I am the president of the Library Board. Okay. That's, is that, that's an elected position or, or do we they? rotate on the board uh, who is president so that we don't have somebody continues year after year. How many members do you have? We have a seven member board. All elected. Yeah, a district libraries are always seven members okay. and they're elected by the people. OK. How long have you been on the board? Well, I've been on the board since 1969. So it's oh, a long time. Forty two years. Forty two years. Yeah. And, and you haven't read all the books yet? Is it? No, I'm still working on them. Okay. And believe me, there were those who thought that's what we do on the, on the board is read the books. Well, what do you do? We set policy, Al. Okay. Uh, in other words, that we set the long range picture as to what the library should be. And uh, we hire one person. We hire our library director. And Stephanie has, has, is doing a wonderful job for us. And that's one of the things when you come onto a board that the people have to understand. They only have one employee, and that's the director. It's not their role to try to walk around the library and show people how to do their job better. You know, we only work through the director. We set policy. Now, that's a hard act to follow, too, isn't it, Stephanie? You had uh, Mike Madden over there for how many years? Yes, it is, 40 years. Mike yeah. was uh, created, along with the board, the most remarkable library that uh, I've seen in all my years as a professional. What's your background? I've been a library director before coming to Schomburg. I was director of the Scarsdale Public Library in New York, okay. and before that, director of the Mount Kisco Public Library. I've, I'm a, a librarian by training and education, okay. Okay. and have worked my entire career in the public library sector. How, how did you get involved in, in being a librarian? How, how did, you know? You pick up a book and say, hmm, you know, how'd you do well, that? Well, when, when I was in college and having to make a career decision, I was um, really agonizing over the decision. And suddenly, I just picked my head up and looked around me. And I was in the library, the college library. And I realized, this is the place that I am happiest. Okay. And I thought, I could, I could do this. Where'd you get your, your degree? Uh, Queens College, City of New York, okay. Master's in Library Science. OK. All right. Well, that's great. You know, you got to search far and wide, and you found somebody from New York. Uh, I, I tell people I was on the library board for 39 years. I did everything a board person ever have to do except hire a new librarian. And believe me, when that became my responsibility, there is nothing more important that you, that you do. Uh, for you as a mayor, I'm sure that looking at hiring a, a police chief or a village manager, those are the responsibilities that you know really are going to leave a lasting impression on your community. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I've been through a couple of those. Yeah. That, uh, and we've got a fine village manager, by the way. And a fine, yes. and, and, and <laughs> Not fine, saying you need to a look fine, for a fine police chief. No, <laughs> no you're, well, Ken, you're, you're, you're safe for now. Yeah. <laughs> and now, Jane, you're, you're a historian. You're the local scribe of, of what, what happened in Schaumburg and what's happening in Schaumburg. And I try. I try. <laughs> yes. um, I started out as the as just a reference librarian and uh, gradually took on the Illinois collection and um, branched out from that with the library with the local history collection as well. And um, we've built that up to include a digital archive, a local history blog. We have oral histories. We have a separate collection that is just local history also in the library. Now, somebody wants to access something that happened in Schomburg 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago, what do they do? 
Um, they can certainly come to the library and start um, with our reference desk and um, ask their question. They'll be taken either to the local history collection or um, shown some of the documents, some of the photos, maps, videos that we have on our digital archive too. What are some of the interesting things you've, you've stumbled across in your, in your um, pouring over the documents? It's, that... it's amazing um, what you can stumble across. and. Um, some of it's just serendipitous sometimes. Um, for instance, there was a mill in Schaumburg in the early, in the early parts of the uh, 20th century, and no one, uh, there's a picture of it, but no one knew where it was. What, what picture? Where's the picture? I what, have what's the picture it look like? with me. Oh, you do? That's great. I do, right here. It is this, oh, yes, oh, yes. It is this mill, and no one knew where it was um, until I happened to be reading an early issue of the Daily Herald, and at that time it was the Cook County Herald, and it mentioned that it was um, just um, south of the Botterman home. And um, another person who's very interested in local history, who I work with quite a bit, um, knew where the Botterman home was, and so we could determine where it was. Just okay, where's that. the Botterman home? The Botterman home was between the Easy Street Pub and okay. the Buttery, and okay. that's where that building was really? located. Yes. Really? Mm -hmm. So for years it went undetected. I knew there was a mill. I knew there was a miller because I could uh, search the census and there was a miller listed there. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it wasn't until we had access to some of those old issues of the Daily Herald through our electronic resources. There was a whole gas station there too, wasn't there? One pump gas station? There was Brown's gas station. Where was that in relationship to this? Um, I think it was about in the same place, actually. Okay, okay. Well, what happened to the mill? Um, don't know, because um, there's no mention, it, mention of it in the Daily Herald. I'm, assume it, I'm assuming it was torn down. It seems to have lasted only until about um, somewhere between the 1915 and 1920. There is no miller listed in the 1920 census, okay. so I'm assuming it kind of went... Um, um, it went away. Yeah, it was probably yeah. torn down. The lumber was used, something well, like that. There's a rich history of, in Schaumburg that uh, it's nice to have somebody at the library tracking that to make sure and certain that, that it gets it's preserved. Because I know there was a uh, bootleggers. They, they, they had a, they, they rented a barn over there from, from Redeker, from Mrs. Redeker over there at Spring Valley. Oh, did they? Yes, they did. And as a matter of fact, they, they rented that barn and, and uh, uh, even the barn they actually caught fire at one point and they had to put it out and they were trying to keep it all a big secret. And, and they were running, running, running the bootlegging operation for a couple of months and then some guy showed up with submachine guns, and they said, We're gonna, we want all your, all your stuff. And what, what could they do? They had to give it to them. They couldn't call the cops because what they were doing was illegal. Mm -hmm. So then they moved everything out of there, they went to Indiana uh, for, for their, their still. And then the, the, the Fed showed up to check it out, and then Mrs. Redeker had the barn torn down. And, and then they, they spread the rumor that the barn got blown away by a tornado. And that really wasn't the case. They tore it down because she was so ashamed as to what took place. Mm -hmm. But that's a little local history, and you, you know the, the, the foundation of the barn is still there. You, right. Yeah, you know where it is. Yes, we yes. just took a tour not too long ago. Yeah. I want to thank you for for, for helping the village of Shamburg do something with Town Square with the oh. with the performances over there and and, and the, the, yeah, that was a win-win. Oh no, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Really, we're indebted to you guys for, yeah, for, no, for, we, for we are as well working with us. So, yeah. well, thank you mm -hmm. so much for for the wonderful job you've done is making the, the Shamburg Township Library what it is today. So, so thank you. What three-day festival? brings over 200,000 people to Schaumburg each year. You'll find out next on Speaking of Schaumburg. <music> Labor Day weekend means just one thing in Schaumburg, Septemberfest. Here to talk about this year's fest is Special Events Coordinator Roxanne Benvenuti. Roxanne, thanks for being here once again. Can't believe it's that time already. Yeah, September Fest. And well, end of summer, but still. Tell, tell us. Tell us about They're the fest. They're sweet. Everyone's looking forward to the fest, but sad that summer is coming to an end yeah, at that yeah. time. So, so what do you, you got planned for us this year? Oh, it's always a great time at September Fest in Schaumburg. I um, love, you know, all the usual wonderful things uh, about September Fest, the craft show. and How many craft crafters? Uh, a little over 250. How many on a waiting list? A few, a handful. handful. At, at this point, we have them pretty locked in, so we're okay. right around that 250, 255 mark. What about some of the main stage events? What are some of the exciting main stage events we're going to do? Well, gonna... we finally made the announcement of the bands for this year recently on our website, but on Saturday we'll be featuring 
Bad Medicine, which is a Bon, Tro jo bon Jovi tribute opening up for Eddie Money. Okay. Um, which um, we've had many requests to have him okay. back at the fest. And on Sunday, we'll be featuring Hartsfield opening for the fabulous Th Thunderbirds featuring Kim Wilson. Okay. He's part. Kim Wilson is part of the band Fabulous Thunderbirds. Okay. And on Monday, we'll have He Said, She Said opening for Seventh Heaven. Uh, sh uh, Chicago's favorite Seventh Heaven band. Well, that's wonderful. Except I don't know any of these fans. <laughs> I've you heard of Eddie Money. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I will. You'll have I'm to sure come check them out. It, yeah, it's yeah, great yeah. music. It's great family, all ages show type fest music. Yeah, but now, now you have three different stages here, don't you? Oh yes, we've got the main stage. What we just the main mentioned. stage. Okay. And then we also have uh, wonderful activities on the local on the Prairie Center for the Arts stage, which features a lot of the uh, local District 54 elementary school bands and sure. orchestras and uh, families can come see their child perform and many park district uh, performances as okay. well and we end the evening on that stage with a local band that's always always a, a great act to catch. So. I mean how many different acts do you have on, on that smaller stage? Uh, they started in the morning from when we open all the way up until 7 o'clock so from okay. 10 a.m. on Saturday till 7 you're going to find entertainment on that stage and um, on Sunday and Monday. And then as you well. have a dining tent too. We have a yeah, we have entertainment in the dining tent while you're and who, you know, enjoying you, your your lunch, your dinner, or snack. You can also listen to music. What do you have music. there? Oh, variety of music too in the dining tent. Each day we have a couple of acts okay. the, performing in the dining tent, so you can you know listen to entertainment while you're eating yeah. in there and talking with your friends and family. Well, that's great. That's great. So, and oh. strolling performers. There's just entertainment everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, it's a taste of Schaumburg, right? Yes. How, how many restaurants do you have this year? This year we're going to have 25 restaurants. And what do we have last year? Anywhere between 24 and 26 is what we can fit in that tent. Okay, all right. So, yeah, a couple, what, of, a lot of returning. Okay, a like, of like what? Uh, Malnati's, I'm sure. Oh, there have been a staple part of, of September course, of course. on that corner, yeah. Um, many of them returning. The new ones we have this year are the Snuggery, which opened uh, on St. Patty's Day in sure, Schaumburg. Sure, sure. And also in Indulge Cheesecakes. Indulge cheesecake? Yeah, where you can get cheesecake on a stick. Cheesecake on a stick? Anything on a stick is good. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, that'll be a new one. And also Tilted Kilt is planning on uh, attending okay. the fest. Right. And then the usual ones that come back every year. Okay. Lots of lots of variety of food. You can definitely worth sampling from all of them. Yeah. Try, yeah. try uh, them yeah, Now you have out-of-town out restaurants too? or no? We focus on the taste of Schaumburg. We like okay. to feature all of the Schaumburg restaurants that way. The idea is that you can sample something at the fest and then go frequent the restaurant okay. throughout the year. And then you got this great parade on Monday, don't you? Lovely Labor Day parade. Okay. All right. People how, how sometimes many? ask when the Labor Day parade is. Yeah, that's right. What no. day is the Labor what Day? What day is the Labor Day? <laughs> it's on Labor Day. <laughs> so. oh, it's like, when's the 4th of July celebration? Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> Well, t t tell us about the, the, the Septemberfest the, uh, parade on, on Monday. You know? well, the parade committee comes up with a nice theme every year, which gives uh, people a means of decorating their entries. And this year's theme is a salute to our champions, which could mean different things for different people. It could be sports, oh, sure. uh, professional and local, could be military, could be scouting, could be anyone who is a champion to you. Obviously, you won't so. have the Chicago Cubs in the parade, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll be wearing my red and blue shirt, where my chairman will probably be wearing black and white that day. <laughs> black and white for, for what? Uh, what? That other team that he, <laughs> that he follows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and what, your chairman is Bill Boyle, right? Yes. Okay. And who's the, who's the parade marshal this year? Parade marshal this year, we've just secured as the Schomburg High School girls cross country team for winning the state championship last year. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so we've uh, just received confirmation uh, today on that actually. Oh, that's great, that's great. Yeah. And how, how many entries do you have in the parade? Usually around 100. We okay. try to keep it around the 100 mark. Your marching bands? Always. And who, who do you have as a marching band? Oh, always Schomburg High School, Conan High School, and a variety of other uh, marching bands that apply for the festival. And any surprise kind of, kind of things happening in the parade this year? Any? Uh, I mean, you're going to have the mayor out there throwing candy and the trustees out there walking, those who can walk. Yes. If the mayor can walk, it'll be good, too. But candy uh, by the handful. Might, yeah. might be the, the limping mayor of Schaumburg out here. You know. Yeah. Well, I, I heard that it's very possible we may have the Navy band back. The Navy band. Which is huge. Um, okay. Our uh, parade chair, uh, Darlene Smith, and co-chair Kurt Rogers sure. are more than thrilled with, it uh, looks like a favorable response on that. So, yeah. Um, 
we're, we're hoping that that follows through because they're wonderful. Now, how do if someone has a, how does some, somebody get in the parade? I mean, do you limit it? You say, okay, we have enough enough right now. I mean, if somebody built a float or something, would they be? Uh... Well, it's usually not for profit organizations, okay. uh, local businesses that apply. Businesses also need to be a sponsor to be in the parade. So businesses can they, they can be a sponsor. Yes. And what does sponsorship entail? No, there are six different levels of sponsorship, and um, well, but for the parade application, you need to be a sponsor of at least five hundred dollars if you're a business and not okay. for profit groups. There's no charge. We do have a couple of you know, local residents that just want to have an entry in the parade. Oh, so really? That happens sometimes. L yeah. Like who? They're just gonna walk by themselves. I mean, do they just want to participate in their community parade? And I actually had an interesting one this year. Uh, a local family who lives uh, nearby, and their children are building a float. <laughs> and so they, they want to so, be a part so, of their family. So that could be like festival. the Murphy Parade, right? Or the the uh, yeah, they're the, they're the, kind of doing it as like a couple the, of residents. The on Smith street. Family Parade. You know, they're getting together with a couple of neighbors, but really? usually, usually, <laughs> as you know, it's a not-for-profit groups like oh, sure. the Scouts, the VFW, American Legion, SAA, all of the local uh, sports and scouting. Uh, yeah. Okay. When, when you, when you, how many people on your committee? I mean, this is, it takes a, a big effort, doesn't it? Huge. And I, I um, uh, rely heavily on them. They do such a fabulous job. And luckily for me, we haven't had a lot of turnover. There's 20 committee members. 20 so committee members. Typically a chair and a co-chair for each division okay. of, the, of September Fest. And it really does take an entire group of people who know what they're doing to pull off such a successful event. Yeah, and plenty of, plenty of history there, too. I mean, some of these, some of these folks really... Been what 15, 20 years, right? Yeah, they've been name some of those. Off, so. Kurt Rogers certainly is one. Kurt Rogers is our co-chair of the whole event and also the co-chair of the parade. And Bill Boyle, our chairman, has been in for a long time. Um, Jerry Jakubczak does our not-for-profit day. Okay. Carol Prokopa and Jean Han both do the crafts. Sure, sure. Um, I have um, for the fireworks and the maintenance, sure. I have Mark Johnson and Richard Whiskerchin. And now, what, is it, what does this cost the community? I mean, what is this, how, much, how much is this going to cost the village of Chambry to put on this parade? We're hoping it doesn't cost anything. How does that we, work? We try to support ourselves um, by booth fees, local sponsorship, uh, sponsorship from participating businesses, and uh, our percentage of the restaurant and carnival to offset all of the expenses that are involved in putting on such a a large event. So yeah. our goal is uh, not to make any money, but not to lose any money. Our goal is just to simply break even and put on a wonderful fest. And we come pretty close every year. How'd you do last year? Last year we had a, a slight surplus. So last year was good to talk about. Okay. You know, it all depends on, you know, um, sponsorship from businesses and and the weather, you know, because we receive a percentage of the sales from food and carnival. And so it's, it's weather dependent and, and participation. And weather can, can kind of knock it out, can't can it? But, it but can still, make a difference. But, but, we still go get we still get people that come no matter regardless. Yeah. Although you know the crowds are and the carnival. Bigger. I mean, you had a, have a contract at carnival, so rain or shine, yes, you're not going to lose out there, right? No. Any any new car carny rides this year? Or any? Yeah. yeah, but they they mix it up a little sure. bit. I mean, they can only fit 18 in that parking lot. So and we have something for the disabled too, don't we? The, the handicapped. Yes, on Saturday, if uh, if you uh, live in the village of Schomburg or Schomburg Township, you can apply for the. Uh, free rides for children with disabilities. Okay. On Saturday and that's a, morning. That's a, and that's a popular event, though, isn't it? Yes. 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 We reach. Uh, we can service up to 500 people. What on time that. does the parade start on, on Monday? Kicks off at 10 a.m. on 10 Monday. 10 a.m. on Monday. I do want to say one thing that we're really trying to get across to people this Quickly year. Quickly say it. Okay. And the entertainment main stage area this year, we've received several requests over the years for us to limit the size on people's tarps and blankets. And I really, really, really want to try to do something about this. It's hard to enforce, but sure. we're asking people not to bring any tarps or blankets larger than uh, 10 feet by 12 feet. Okay. And we'll put some signs out there. And we just want to leave enough room for everyone to enjoy the show. And, and, and room for, for and pe people to, to get through, too. something larger than that. Because 10 by 12 is still pretty reasonable sure. on the size. So we're asking, that's new for this year, that we're asking people not bring anything yeah. larger than that. And we want people to become a friend of the fest. Okay. How did how, how? Residents can become a sponsor of September Fest. With a $25 contribution, you get your name on the projection screen, your okay. family name. And with $50, you get your name and... Quickly, quickly, this quickly. This awesome shirt. That, that is an awesome shirt. <laughs> it How is. many colors does it, does it come in? Well, right now it comes in gray. Okay. <laughs> Isn't it okay. lovely? Yeah, it is. It's wonderful. So we want people to become a friend of the fest. Okay. And one last thing new for yes. this year. Quickly. Schomburg Shuffle. The Schomburg uh, Hoffman Rotary Club are bringing back 
the 5K run that has not okay. been in part of September Fest since the year 2000. Okay, so all you lean athletes out there are going to yes, have to. Yes, they yeah. can certainly run and yeah. sign up at schomburgshuffle.com. Okay. And they can uh, register to do the 5K run, which will happen at 8 a.m. right before the parade. So all the parade participants will cheer you on as you come down the, the okay. road. Okay, okay. All right. Well, hey, Roxanne. Thank you. Good interview. Nice yes. to talk to you again. Look forward to some Look nice forward weather. To fest. Want to find out about the biggest backstage party of the year? Stay tuned right here on Speaking of Shambles. The Prairie Center Arts Foundation provides tremendous financial support to the programs at the Prairie Center. Their biggest fundraising event of the year is right around the corner. Lisa Sukup and Camille Berenchek are here to tell us all about it. Well, thanks for being here, Lisa, and thank you, Camille. You're very welcome. Our pleasure. Well, now tell me about your involvement in, in, in this foundation gala. Well, the foundation is the fundraising wing uh, for the Prairie Center. And we use the celebration event in September to raise most of our funds that will help to support programs throughout the year. And you, you've had these events before, though, haven't you? And there are more than one event throughout the year, but this is the major event that does okay. the fundraising for us. Celebration last year was a pretty successful event, was it, it was. not? It was. It was. And you, you anticipate the same thing this year, I would anticipate. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> Camille, <laughs> tell, tell me about your involvement. Well, I am co-chair of this event. And this year, we're happy to say we have 12 restaurants that are involved, as well as um, wonderful entertainment that will take place throughout the building. So there's food, and there's fun, and there's, and there's music, and there's dance, and there's laughter. And... Absolutely. It's truly a celebration. Come okay. wearing your finest party clothes, yeah. and uh, you will have a wonderful time here eating food from Bonefish, uh, Westwood Grill, uh, sweets from Fannie Mae, uh, John Barleycorn, La Felle, but just to mention a few of the restaurants that will be participating. And where, where does it take place? It takes place at the Prairie Center, Okay. Uh, all throughout the building and out on the plaza, provided we have good weather. Okay. And, and normally you have a band or an orchestra out on the, on the plaza, don't you? We usually have one act on the uh, plaza and then one in the studio, one on the stage with dancing on the stage, and then usually a, a, a smaller group or a single artist in the meeting rooms. Okay. And you, have, you turn this into kind of a nightclub atmosphere, don't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Right. That's kind of dark and, and, and mysterious, and you have cafe tables and places for people to sit and enjoy their drinks and uh, food and, and uh, just listen to the music. How about the entertainment? What, what specifically do you, who do you have here? Do well, you, we you? have Brass from the Past. They were here last year. Okay. And, and what uh, were they? They are a big band sound. So they'll be on the stage then? They will be on the stage, and there will be a space available for dancing as well as just sitting and enjoying your food and your cocktails while you're watching Brass from the Past. Okay. And they do a mixture of music, current music, 40s, 30s, they do everything. Okay. What other music venues do you have? To um, this year we have uh, Megan McDonough, and she'll be in the studio area, and we have Gin and Tonic, who will be out on the plaza. And that sounds like a nice group. Gin and Tonic. <laughs> uh, they're actually kind of a, a country pop band. Okay. So something a little bit different from what we've okay. had in the past. And then Steve Savada will be performing for us in the uh, meeting rooms. Okay, and you, you have a, a food stations all throughout the entire building? Food stations all throughout the building. Uh, food will be served from 7 to 10, and then the uh, event will continue until 11 o'clock. So the bands will play until 11 o'clock at night. What's your target goal in terms of revenue? We're looking well, for between twenty five and 30000 this year. Okay, all right. That's great. How does that compare to previous years? Um, it's a little bit more, but we're always pushing to do a little oh, bit sure. better from year to year. How many, how many folks do you, do you typically entertain? How many, how many people show between up? Between three and 400, mm -hmm. about three and 400. Mm -hmm. That's well, what that's, we're that's, hoping that's, for. That's, that's a nice venue, though. I know that I've, I've got friends who, who come to that, and certainly I'm going to be there for that as well. Uh, the music on the, on the plaza, uh, those folks who live on top of the hill are going to be entertained. Yes, they will. It's a will. lovely evening. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And dancing out there, too, I suspect, if people Certainly choose to. Certainly, if you choose to. You can yeah. dance out on the plaza and enjoy a drink and your food. And, and, and you have uh, these portable bars set up uh, throughout? The, you know. Yes, we have portable bars backstage. Okay. As well as on the plaza. Okay. And it's a cash bar, but, but, cash the, bar. but the food is all part of the ticket price? Correct. And what are the, how much the, are the tickets? They're $60 okay. in advance, okay. 65 at the door. Okay. And uh, for a party of six, party of six. it's uh, 
Fifty-five. Fifty-five dollars a ticket. Okay. Right. Party of six. But it's a, it's a, you get a fantastic meal. Oh my goodness, yes. And and, and wonderful entertainment. Yes. And what time does it start? What time does the party start? Seven o'clock. Mm -hmm. Seven o'clock. Till. Eleven. Eleven. So you get four Seven hours. Seven to eleven. Mm -hmm. And twelve we have restaurants. A, twelve restaurants. We have a silent auction. Some wonderful okay. things on the silent auction. And you, any new restaurants this year? This year, new is um, Bahama Texas Breeze. de Brazil. Texas oh, de Brazil. Okay. And Bahama Breeze. Okay. Uh huh. Bar uh, Barley Con's been there before. Yeah, yeah. Moretti's, of course. They mentioned a chocolate. Uh, this. Fannie Mae oh, will Fannie be joining Mae. us this year. Fannie this Mae. is the first time for Fannie Mae. Okay. And of course, LaFell makes those wonderful crepes. Oh, yes. The chocolate crepes, the chocolate filled. See, you know, I say crepes all the time, and I get corrected every time I say crepes. They tell me it should be crepes. I said, no, it's crepes. Well, go crepes. To, if you go to France, you'll find that you will not be corrected. Crepes. Mm -hmm. You've been to France. Yes. Have you been to France? I have. Well, that's not fair. I've never been to France. <laughs> <laughs> then you must go. But you've been here, and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Very welcome. Thank, thank you. you. That'll do it for this edition of Speaking of Schomburg. Join us again next month for another all-new episode. Until then, I'll see you around town. Thank you.